Hi everyone, it's Chris from Funtech Guys and today we're going to be talking, well, starting our blog project. So this is going to be very basic to start off with. We'll set up our database, connect to that database, um, insert some data and retrieve that data onto a, just an index.php page. Further down the line we'll evolve this over time, we'll set up sessions and admin sections, um, cookies, destroy sessions, logging out. Um, sanitizing data and, and such but don't worry about that for time being what we'll do is we'll get the foundation started now and then we'll be able to evolve it as I say over time so my setup at the moment I'm just I've got one tab has got my PHP my admin which I've done nothing with at the moment I've got a blank blog page here and if I pull up Atom I have nothing in my index.php all I've got is a blog with index.php here which is being called so head over to PHP My Admin, and if you just want to create a new database, so I'm just going to click on New here and call this Blog and Create. Now, what I like to do when starting a project is just on a Notepad or Sublime, Atom, whatever, just write down the, the columns that I'm going to need within each of each of my tables. So I'll say, right, I'm creating a blog or a post or an articles table, and I'm going to need this column, this column, this column, this column, because I need to record a certain amount of data. So we'll just follow the same suit there. So within my articles table, uh, actually let's call it post. In my in my post table, we want an ID. So it's always best practice to have an, a unique identifier. So we can identify an individual post, and no post will have the same ID at any stage. So we can say right. This post is po it has the unique identifier of one, and the next one will be two, three, and so on. It auto increments. So we've got an ID. We'll have a title. We'll have content like me, and we'll have a timestamp because we want to know when the post was submitted. So that's what we'll do. So if we come over here and let's call this posts and let's say the first one is an ID. It's, um, so the name is ID, the type is integer and we'll scroll across. I'm just going to click A underscore I for auto increment and then this has been popping up for, um, with my latest install of PHP my admin. So you want it to be a primary key because you want to say this is the, yeah, this is the primary key basically. Don't worry about that for the time being, but I'll I'll explain that a little bit more later on. If that doesn't pop up, you can select it from just um, from your index drop down. So I'll just select primary key there. Um, in the next column, uh, next row, sorry, we want a title. So set this as a far char. When you set in text or variable characters, you want to yeah, yeah, so you have to set a length. So I'm just going to set this to 255 for the time being. And that's it for that one. This one, I'm going to put content. And I'm just going to set this as text. Don't worry about the length for that one. Because text is, is it's, a, it's a large amount of text. So there is no definitive absolute length. And this one is going to be timestamp. So with this one, what you want to select is timestamp underneath the date and, t uh, date and time category. And then if you scroll across and you want to select, not that one, you want to select on update current timestamp. So basically when something updates, when you run the query or when you insert the data, select the, later, select the time from that point and that's on attributes. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I've rambled a little bit there, but basically all we've done is we've set an ID, which is a, a unique identifier, and that auto increments every time. So post one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, we've set a title with a with a character length. We've set a content area, and we've set a timestamp to say when the post was actually submitted. So if you just click go, did I go? Okay, so if you click save, I thought Go worked for some reason. Anyway, 
so we've got our table now as you can see over here we've got a blog database and we've got posts here so what we want to do is we want to just insert some data just to make sure everything's fine so ID title content but let's just say leave ID because ID will automatically select itself title will be uh, awesome blog title some content going in here um, I should have really got some lower mips in but it makes no odds so we've got some some content and again on timestamp don't worry about that because that will update itself so we click go there we go and for some reason timestamps not changed so let's go back into our structure what I'm looking for here is it's updated everything to 000 but it shouldn't have so let's change this okay timestamp the name type should be timestamp and where it's got default we've put as defined we want the current timestamp so I'm just going to save that go back to our data edit go now is that updated no it's not right don't worry I'm just going to delete it there's, there's not much point in faffing around with this at the moment because it's not crucial at this stage some content and then current timestamp go browse our data and we'll see it's updated the time to say right this is when we submitted the date uh, there th this post this entry to the database so that didn't go as smoothly as I had hoped but nevertheless let's move on and forget that happened so we've only indexed our PHP page let's connect to the database so first of all let's open our PHP obviously and then it's always best practice to comment your 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 scripts so I'm just going to put connection details and let's connect Let, uh, let's declare our variables so we can connect to our database so host username password and database right so host nearly always will be localhost uh, username that is here so if I just show you if we go click on up here where you've got server local host and then you'll get user accounts so user accounts and what we're doing is we've got user accounts here username is root this is what I'm connecting to my local host and I've got no password so username root password no password database is what we created earlier blog so blog now what we want to do is we want to set our variables to say that we've connected uh, we're connecting so con equals and then this needs to take in the parameters that we've set up here so let's go host user pass database so let's just save that and just check our work so not no errors at this stage which is good so let's check if we've connected successfully so we can say if connect error oh connect score error now so if there's a connection error number then we'll echo connection failed and then connection error okay so here's where we could do something like 
mail admin or we exit the script something along these lines because you know we've we failed to connect there's, there's no point in carrying on with the script so let's just save that so if I pull up this we've not had an error so we must be connected so if I just change what we've been found lots of errors now so I'm gonna undo that so we know that we've connected successfully so we can move on what we need to do now is prepare our query so what do we need to select from the database well we want to select everything so select all from oh, posts so we're selecting everything from here save right let's just get rid of that error don't like having errors up on the screen now what we need to do is actually perform this query so all we're doing here is we're, we're declaring this, the, the query here but we've not actually done anything with it so let's say result equals connect query and pass in the query that we're going to pass there we want to, to select so select query where um, select all from posts and then we're going to perform that query here so here's let's just say hypothetically we had 10,000 blog posts we could say select hit um, select all from posts where ID equals one or two in this instance because we deleted the first one so that's what we can manipulate this query and we will do things like that when we're creating pagination and such further down the line but don't worry about that now we're just selecting everything so select all and let's see if we've got any errors still no errors on the page so we're doing something right at this at this stage anyway so let's check if we've got any data so we can go right if result num underscore row rows sorry is greater than zero let's just echo we have data else echo no data okay so what we're doing here is we're preparing the query we're running the query itself then we'll check so we're throwing it and um, the results into well yeah we're throwing the results into a variable called results then we're checking if the results total number of rows is greater than zero it means we have selected some data if that's the case then let's just echo we have some data otherwise else in this instance we have no data because it's not greater than zero so we have no data We have data. There's another way we can do this as well. We just to make sure that we, you know, a, a quite a nice way of um, bug finding and seeing if it's there's a problem with your query or if there's a, there's a problem with your code is you can select this, go into PHP My Admin, click on SQL, and just paste in your query. So select all from posts, and then if you click go down here, select all from posts. No database in. Select all from. Huh. Oh, I've not selected a database. Sorry, I've not gone into blog. So, there you go. Sorry about that one. So, what you need to do is you need to go into blog itself because I was at the top level where we was just selecting the user. So, click on blog, click on SQL, and then just paste your query in. Go. So, we know the query is running. What uh, the query is fine because we've just returned some data here. So if we pull back Atom up, now what we need to do is we need to handle the data. We have data, so let's handle it. So while while row is equal to result fetch as 
So what we're saying here is for each item there is, we'll loop round and we'll throw the results into, uh, we'll, we'll fetch the results as an associative array and we'll pass it into row. So um, that, that might sound a little bit confusing at the moment, just stick, bear with me. So what we can do is we can go echo and I'll just echo one for it for the time being. So let's just say row capital. Right, so what, what this is doing is we're passing the results of each column into a variable called row. So this is the variable here. This title pairs up with this title here, the, the column name. So we've gone round, we've fetched the results and we've thrown it into an array. So we have ID, title, content and timestamp available to us in these. So if I said ID, save this and we loaded it, we'd have ID2. If I change this to title, save, reload this page, our awesome, awesome title. So that's all we're doing, we're just looping round and every row, in this instance there's only one row, but every row will we'll go back round and we'll overwrite the previous row and we'll just pass in the, the the column names as a as a as a variable back to the um, back to something that we can handle. So if I just insert some more data and say blog two, oh blog two, some content two, and just click go. What are you expecting to happen? If I refresh, we've got blog two. That's because we've looped around the first time, and then we've still got more data. So whilst um, whilst row is equal to an associate to array, we, we just keep on going round. So it's gone back round. It's done ID two, and then it's come back up, and it's done ID three. So if I just add a break tag there, we're starting to see some some formation of the uh, of the blog itself. So knock down onto new line let's just pull in our content terminate our line and refresh so again we um, we've got data because our data is greater than uh, our results is greater than greater than zero so whilst our results is greater than zero Set a, param a set a variable called row or, 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 an, a or an array, sorry. Loop round that our results and throw each result into an associative array and pass it back to the row. So row is our variable, which we can just keep on calling here. And the parameters, uh, the variables that we've got to us in the array are the column names. Column names. So if I just go HR here, we can separate our data. So that's where I'm going to leave this blog post. Um, sorry, this blog post, just blog posts on my mind. That's where I'm going to leave this video for the time being. Uh, we have successfully created a database, we've created a table, we've set four columns up, we've inserted data into that, we've connected using our credentials up here to our database, and we've checked if we've got uh, any errors within our connection. We've also tested that by breaking the connection itself, noticing that we are being thrown errors. So connection failed, connection error. So connection failed, access denied for user. There's a problem with the connection, with the, with the uh, credentials. So once we've handled that, we've pre prepared our query, we've run the query itself, We've checked if there's data. If there's no data, then we're just going to echo back to the user. There is no data. Otherwise, we've looped around our data at each result, and then we've passed those results back to the user. So, all in all, I'd say that's a fairly successful uh, video tutorial. I'm going to leave that one there. I'm starting to ramble, and it has been quite a long video. We'll pick this up again next time, and we'll start creating probably an admin section. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you've taken I hope you've taken something from it. Cheers, bye bye.